Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. What you doing on my part of the woods? Oh, you want some building advice from me? Oh, that's so sweet of you, honey. You know, my builds aren't too bad. Oh, look, there's my favorite bird. Patricia, how you doing, honey? Today, I'm gonna be teaching you how to not be a bad Bloxburg builder with 15 different tips and steps on how you can be the best builder in any server. Now, I do gotta say, I am definitely far from the best Bloxburg builder myself. Also, I don't know what I'm doing with this wheelbarrow here. <laughs> Whose body should I pick up next? Hmm. You know, if you don't subscribe, actually, you'll, you'll be the, the next, next one in this wheelbarrow. wheelbarrow. This first one is going to irritate everybody, and I already can see the comments coming in. But using too much linen is a big no-no. As you can see behind me, I do not use any linen here. Oh, I guess at the wheelbarrow I do, but sh that doesn't matter. I use like a different color. Oh, there's some more linen. Okay, maybe I do have an addiction. Oh, and there's linen all over the place. Point is though, some people use a little too much linen to the point where I think they're colorblind and the only color they see is linen. Other colors of brown are actually not that bad, guys. I mean, take a look at this dining table and tell me this doesn't look too bad. With the proper color scheme, you can make a darker brown or even a lighter brown look pretty good. Secondly, if you're not using any wall trim or pillars in your build, you are missing out. On the side of my house here, I have wall trim and pillars, and it just adds a lot more depth than just the basic wall. Oh gosh. Okay, this is really embarrassing to show. This is when I didn't know how to use basic shapes and structural items, so they were a little, um, a little bit uneven. <laughs> but having wall trim just really adds detail to your build, even just the really small ones that don't take up a lot of space. So if you're wondering what your build is missing, remember wall trim, because I often forget about it too, but just knock it into your mind. Wall trim, wall trim, wall trim. Putting your house at the front of your plot um it's kind of a stupid idea but not only that what if a crazy driver was going down the street and your house was just right there it makes it that much more easy to crash into you know so that's kind of a liability but it also just looks bad make sure to leave room between your house and the sidewalk because i see some of these players just literally living like on the sidewalk you have a whole plot to mess with and by leaving room to make a little pathway to your house you leave room for gardening which is the next step on our list if you're not gardening yet what are you doing it just makes builds come alive i mean take a look at this little pond and the little plants everywhere and the rocks if you just built a house and it feels a little plain on the outside if you add a garden oh my goodness it literally makes a world of a difference and i think i've said this a million times your build can be ugly af but if you have a little tree and if you have a little shrub in the front yard it's like putting on makeup you know it's <laughs> It's basically catfishing everyone. These next two examples I actually fall victim to. First off, it is forgetting to decorate the back of your house. I really need to work on this one. I need to take my own advice because I spend a lot of time on the front of my house and then the back of it, I just, um, I just let it be. The next thing I fall victim to is not using the same style windows. As you can see here, they're somewhat similar style, but I forgot to color this one. And so on the outside of your house, it looks kind of stupid. I also see a lot of people using just completely different style. Like you got contemporary, you got modern, you got vintage, all in the same house. And I'm just like, pick a window theme, please. I beg of you. Now for something a little more basic that we probably all thought of is color schemes. If you're still building in all black and white in 2020, three girl go back to 2018 because that is where you belong okay we're in the 21st century use a little bit of pops of color please you know even if that's just gray and browns and blacks that's not as bad as just making your house look like a hospital i wouldn't go so far to make your rooms look like this one <laughs> however if this is your taste um so be it experiment with color schemes you know don't just go all one way just try something new add a little bit of pizzazz this next one is for all those people out there who have ocd or something like it is when floors overlap and you can kind of see the textures moving or if you use a wood floor where if you use diagonals and not straight lines it kind of does this weird texture here i know we've all fallen victim to the glitchy floors and they're not super easy to fix you know i would recommend going to a doctor about that actually but with a little practice you can figure out a way to make the puzzle work and to make your flooring not look like this i'm gonna have to adjust my house for this one but if your second floor oh gosh <laughs> 
<laughs> Why is that black? If your second floor overhangs like this above the first floor and it's just kind of chilling there, maybe add some beams or pillars to make it look like it's being supported so it's a little more realistic. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but if you want to look like a pro Bloxburg builder and blow away all your friends, maybe I recommend, you know, abiding by the rules of gravity. My next point is using the brightest white lighting in your houses is just a big no-no. I mean, do you want people to feel like they're in heaven when they walk into your house? You do, but you don't want them to feel like in heaven because they're being blinded by the light. You want them to feel like they're in heaven because they really like your build, but if they can't even see your build because they're literally being blinded by this lighting, this is when I give you the excuse to use the color linen because linen makes a pretty good cream colored lighting or just experiment with any of the other colors. Just don't use bright white, please. I want to be able to see after I leave your house. The next point on my list while I'm just casually drowning here is don't make your houses too big where you don't know how to fill up the whole space. This is a common problem I see in public servers when people make mansions, but it's just like this really empty space and all the walls just have nothing on them. And it kind of feels like you're in the back rooms almost. When you're making a house, make sure that you can fill up all the walls and make it kind of cozy. Along with that, make sure the outside of your house doesn't have any long flat walls with nothing on it. Let me actually pull up one of my own builds for reference because I have plenty of those. Some of these walls are just like really long and barren and there's nothing going on. So if you have any really long Long walls like this maybe add some windows or these little lights some plants would also do maybe some vines hanging and also this is a prime example of my next point being do not use too much stone texture I find that it makes your builds look very complicated and overwhelming as you can see there's a lot of stone going on here and I just don't think it looks too nice so add some stone but also add some nice colors that contrast to it that are kind of more flat okay I didn't build this house I hired someone on Fiverr to do it but this wall is a prime example of forgetting to to change your decals. I mean, it makes a big difference whether or not your decal is aesthetic or this ugly green and red color. You know, you're gonna put all this effort into a house and then forget to change the decals. I'm also talking to myself because I do that a lot. <laughs> and my final point being, don't copy and paste a bunch of items and just spread them all over your house. I actually have a prime example of this when I hired someone on Fiverr to build me a house and they just ended up like spam copying, pasting all these random items like soap in books and vases just everywhere. And it, you could really tell that they were kind of being lazy with the build. So moral of the story, don't be a lazy builder or else people can tell because um, soap isn't supposed to be everywhere in a build, dude. I'm still kind of traumatized from that experience. Anyway, that is the 15 ways to become a better Bloxburg builder. And I gotta take my own advice. So in no way am I... um kind of qualified to film this video, but here we are. If you have any other tips and tricks, please leave them down below in the comments so you can share them with everyone. Let's all become pros together, you know? Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Leave a like and subscribe for more, and I will see you all later. Bye, my beautiful bubbles!